There's been a lot of uh, success stories with uh, planting soybeans into cereal rye in various stages, uh, but it seems like that there, there's a need for more information and uh, more demonstrations on effective management ahead of corn because of the nitrogen management and some of the residue management issues. John Pike is the operator of Pike Ag LLC in Marion, Illinois. He is a contractor consulting and researching in nutrient management, cover crops, and water quality. Today, John takes us to his farm south of Marion, where he has been managing a nine-year intensive cover crop program. Behind me, the field was planted to a uh, cover crop uh, last fall, uh, about the 1st of, of October. Uh, in a full mix of cereal rye, annual rye grass, uh, crimson clover, and hairy vetch. And uh, early April, when we had a good uh, stretch of uh, weather about a month and a half ago, I uh, sprayed a selective grass herbicide on this field and took the uh, grasses out to just leave the, the legumes that we'll plant into just as soon as it dries up. John says it's important to have a strategy and plan well in advance because cover crops and their management need to be suited to your location, the crop rotation, and the field environment. So in, in this particular situation, my plan started uh, about uh, before I planted the soybean crop in, uh, last year. Uh, I had a uh, relatively early variety. It wasn't super early or anything for the region, but uh, something that would be on the earlier side of our, our maturities. I planted that, that bean early to uh, give me an early uh, harvest window, and that allowed for the cover crop to be planted a, a little bit earlier than what we might have uh, with a later uh, variety of bean. And uh, so I got the cover crop planted in time, and there was plenty of uh, warmth and uh, day length and growing degrees to get that cover crop established and out of the ground so it was ready to go into the winter and had good winter survival. In the winter, the cover crop faced cold temperatures in the single digits for three to four days, which caused some loss in the crop, but it recovered and grew into the spring. John says had the cover crop seeding been two to three weeks later in the fall, there would not have been as much growth of the hairy vetch or crimson clover species. The month of April brought termination of the sewer rye and annual ryegrass. The idea of managing this cover crop in the, uh, in the early spring was to uh, terminate the, the grasses out of the, the mix and just leave the, the legumes to grow. Uh, today is May, May 17th, and ideally I would like to have the corn planted by, by now. Uh, it's been exceptionally wet here in this particular area of, of southern Illinois this spring, uh, so that didn't happen. So, but we have the, the cover crop is growing, and uh, you know, I'm not too concerned about it because it's really in the right stage right now because the, the vetch is, is in full bloom as well as the clover, so we're really to the stage right now where we can maximize the nitrogen contribution of the legume to the uh, corn crop that, that will follow. When planning for your cover crop program, John says it's important to think through your whole system strategy as issues have risen up depending on what cover crop mix you're planting into, specifically in this case of planting corn into cereal rye and the nitrogen concerns it brings. One of the big problems that we get in planting into cereal rye is the carbon nitrogen ratio is, is out of balance. So we've got all of the nitrogen taken up into that cereal rye plant and it's not readily available to the, the corn crop to, uh, to follow. So in the situation in my field where I planted the uh, mix that included cereal rye, uh, we took the cereal rye out when it was about six inches tall with a selective grass herbicide and to just leave the legume growing. So we have the planting environment that would be roughly the same as if we were planting into a solid seeded legume, but we've taken the cereal rye out of the picture as far as dealing with the residue that to plant into from a biomass standpoint. And we, we've also sidestepped a lot of the problems with the, with the nitrogen uh, tie up in, in that. Plus we've got the living root in the soil with the legume plants that are helping to dry out this wet soil now. Plus they're adding uh, uh, another source of, of nitrogen that the corn crop will benefit from. 
and when the corn planter rolls through the field, John looks towards the rest of the growing season and the many benefits that that cover crop will bring. As I, as I plant this field, uh, I will uh, follow it and terminate it uh, chemically a after the, the planter goes through the field. And at that point, all of this, the residue mat will fall down in between the, the corn rows and then that will provide uh, better uh, temperature regulation and moisture conservation through the, through the summer. We'll get a better uh, control of weeds or some suppression out of that, even though I will put a, a residual herbicide on to make sure that the field stays clean, but we'll see some suppression from that residue mat. We'll see better uh, uh, moisture conservation and also uh, maintain uh, cooler temperatures through the, the growing season. And that's one thing that I've, I've noticed is that if we compare a no-till uh, cover crop field with a conventional uh, tilled field in the summertime, uh, the, the soil temperature is, is much lower in the, uh, in the cover crop situation. So while it, it's a, it can be a challenge, to manage the cover crop in the in the spring and to get the corn crop established. Once we do that, the rest of the growing season in that environment is generally more favorable environment for the for the corn to develop in because we've got temperature moderation and a little bit better moisture conservation, especially in southern Illinois. But I think these are these are things that could be beneficial in other soil types in other parts of the state. But again, depending on on where you're at, your management considerations are going to be uh, uh, need to be altered just a little bit to make it work the, the best. There's no, no silver bullet si uh, solution to anything, so I think we need to uh, take into account all the information that we can get and the suggestions from others, but we need to make sure that our, uh, our plan is regionalized to our uh, location and to our farm and our individual fields especially. After the corn crop is harvested in the fall, John plans to drill another diverse mix of cover crops into the field. In the spring, he intends to plant an early maturing soybean crop. Nine years into an intensive cover crop management program, John says he has seen big improvements to his farm operation and soil health and nutrient management. For Illsoy Advisor, I'm Kelsey Litchfield.